Not too long ago, a friend set me up with a blind date. A handsome guy, but he probably spent more time on his hair than I did. He seemed pleasant enough, so I introduced myself and sat down next to him. He laughed and shook his head. I pictured you differently, he admitted. I mean, you're beautiful, but I thought you'd be... Strawberry blonde, I interrupted. A bit shorter, freckled with deep dimple cheeks. He stopped laughing but kept a frozen smile. He didn't know what to say. I just stared at him. I knew this was going to happen, so why did I ever think this time would be different? Was that it? I pushed. Was that what you pictured? I didn't even notice that I'd raised my voice. The date was already over as I started screaming at him. Was that what you goddamned pictured? I had already screwed up. At that point, all I could do was lean into it. Let me explain. This has been the story of my life. People remember me wrong. They picture me wrong. Even my own parents could swear that I used to be strawberry blonde as a kid. There isn't a single picture of me with that hair colour. I don't have freckles or deep dimples that make my cheeks puff up. I'm tall, with ink black hair. I got my Mediterranean features from my Italian mum. And that doesn't allow for a lot of cutesy freckles. Still, every person I've met remembers me that way. Sometimes, when we haven't met for a while, they barely recognise me. One of the most common questions I get is whether or not I've done something with my hair. It's really frustrating whenever I have to show my ID, as people just seem hesitant to accept the way I look to be the real me. And yes, I've tried leaning into it. Changing my hair colour, even putting on freckles with a makeup pen, it doesn't help. It still just looks kind of... off. The weird thing is, sometimes I even trick myself. Some mornings I don't recognise my own mirror image. For a split second, like a bump in the night, I'm staring at a stranger. I've talked to a therapist about possibly having some sort of depersonalization disorder, but that just isn't it. The problem isn't just me not recognising myself, it is no one else recognising me either. This is why I've come to an uncomfortable conclusion. Maybe I was supposed to be someone else. This has been my reality for as long as I can remember. Every date, every party, every picture day at school. Every single time someone asks me what I've done with my hair or that they like my new makeup. All these little hints and pokes. It adds up over time. Maybe you can see why I'm a bit sensitive and might lash out at, say, a blind date. But something strange happened that one night. As I stormed off, I took a long walk by the downtown park area. There were a lot of people out and about, but I was all up in my head about overreacting. I thought about ways I could have handled it differently, or that I just had to... I don't know start taking some kind of medication. Any kind. Whatever kind stops this. That's when I first noticed Daniel. It was this strange feeling. He was standing outside of a taco truck, talking to a group of friends. He didn't seem to stand out in any particular way, but I couldn't take my eyes off of him. He had this strawberry blonde hair, pale skin and freckles deep dimples that made his cheeks look bigger. He was shorter than his friends, but he just radiated this joy. I can't explain it. It feels like I could probably draw it as a picture, but I can't explain it with words. I had to talk to him. I walked up to him, past his friends, and tapped him on his shoulder. As he turned around, my mind cramped. He wasn't strawberry blonde, freckled, dimpled or pale. He was Korean, sort of lumpy looking, and in complete shock. So were his friends. Still, he looked at me like he recognised me. 
There was something there, and neither of us could say what it was. We both laughed. How did you... We said it at the same time, mirroring each other's expressions. We both laughed again. Did you see, again at the same time? His friends were laughing now as well. Jinx! They yelled at us. Jinx! Jinx! I had a long conversation with Daniel that night, and we got to know each other. Turns out we were both born on the same day, but that was where our similarities ended. We'd gone to completely different schools in different parts of the country, and we both had the same problem. People mistook us for someone else, remembered us wrong. For him, it was even more abrupt, not even matching the body shape of the image people thought he was. His friends eventually grew tired of us and left. Daniel and I sat there in the park, talking long into the night. We complained about the way people talked about us, how we never really felt like someone saw us, how this weird, stupid quirk was the one defining thing about what it meant to be us. When we finally parted ways, we friended each other and promised to speak again. We did. A lot. Over the next few weeks, we talked every day. I couldn't help myself still mentally picturing him as someone else, like a brain teaser. I thought about him as this thin, pale man with the same features that people thought that I had. It bothered me, but this was exciting. I had never met anyone with the same problem as myself, and all of a sudden, it felt like maybe there wasn't that much wrong with me after all. Then the dreams came. I've always had lively dreams. I'm a very tactile person, so I remember the touch of something before I think of what it looks like. In the night, I could sometimes feel things that I swore I'd never felt before. Holding someone's hand with a hand that isn't mine. Feeling a breeze through someone else's hair. Tasting someone else's breath in your mouth. And the smell of birch trees reaching in through their nose. Like I was a passenger in another body. It would only last short moments and would interrupt whatever other dream I had to the point that I'd wake up. Often in a cold sweat, like my body was scared, even though my mind was calm. Daniel told me he experienced something similar. It was getting more intense. Ever since we met, whatever this problem was had been turned up to 11. We decided to meet and talk about it, for real. We met at the park, not too far from the taco truck where I first saw him. He brought me a milkshake. At first, I didn't even see him. I was expecting the strawberry blonde man that occupied my mind, not whoever this stranger in front of me was. I shook the thought out of my head, thinking he probably felt the same. We should just go for it, he said. Lean into it, see what happens. What do you mean? Like we do in the dreams. I just looked at him. At first, I couldn't connect those thoughts to the person I saw in front of me. The more I thought about it, it felt like I could see through him. Like what he showed wasn't real. That there was a realer part of him that I recognized. The part that we all thought we truly saw before the spell was broken. We raised our hands at the same time and held them against one another. For a split second, I was somewhere else. A meadow in a birch forest, late springtime. Morning dew was still setting on the blue sunflowers surrounding us. Standing next to someone I felt close to. Someone I felt safe with. A warm hand against mine, like we'd had a thousand times before. And still that uneasy feeling. I was still on the park bench. I dropped my milkshake. Did you see that? Daniel asked. Yeah, I said. Yeah, I did. I think I know where that was, he said. I've been there. We got to his car and drove away, following a smaller dirt road out of the city. 
the one down by the Frog Lake. Instead of turning back onto the main road, he followed a smaller road to the log cabins. We were going off-road and still, I didn't mind. I felt safe. He knew this place better than me and I had no idea why or how I would even know that. It was dark outside, but I knew he could get us there either way. We'd been here before. Not this Daniel and not this me, but the real us. The road came to an abrupt end and we got out. Daniel held my hand. There was an overgrown path in the forest, leading us deeper into the woods. Pine trees gave way to birch. The space between the trees tickled winds into pushing against us. For a moment, I was back. That spring team morning, hand in hand. Blue sunflowers, a symbol of things to come. We were siblings, and we were pure. Something touched my nose, and I snapped back to reality. A feather. Where did it even come from? I don't even want to know anymore, sighed Daniel. I really don't. I think we have to, I said. I know, he nodded, but still. Yeah, still. Someone wanted us to go there. We had been told it'd be fine, that everything would work out. Someone had told us a lie, but I didn't know who or why. There, in the dark of the birch woods, I saw the outlines of sunflowers next to the overgrown path. What we were remembering was old, but no less real. My body was itching, telling me to stop. The milkshake wasn't settling in my stomach. All this had ever been was a mild inconvenience, and now it was literally controlling my life. But at least I wasn't alone, and I could feel something coming. Truth, perhaps. Harsh truth. We knew the meadow was just around the bend, but were no less awed when it came. The sky seemed more open. The sun, we were remembering, was replaced by a moon, and the white clouds had turned black. This was the place. This is where we'd been. For a moment, I didn't see Daniel. I saw my brother, smiling at me, talking to me, words reaching out to me like they were spoken underwater. I believe. I didn't even notice him saying it out loud. The real him, the Daniel I'd gotten to know over the past few weeks. What? I said. What did you say? I... I... I don't know, he admitted. I don't know why I said that. What? What else do you want to say? We closed our eyes and spoke from a memory that wasn't our own. Songs eternal, I said. As before, as is now, as will be. Don't, don't say that. I opened my eyes. Daniel was holding back tears, his face shaking. Something bad happens. I feel it. We're doing something bad. I could feel it too, like something crawling up my throat. I watched another white feather dance in the wind, blowing through the meadow. Daniel nodded at me and took a deep breath. We have to keep going, he said, closing his eyes. I know. You're my kin. My soul is true. A sun gone black, a moon gone blue. I ask you, Saviour, through and through. If not the three of us, then who? As before, I said. As is now, Daniel continued. Then quiet. There was supposed to be a third person. There had been a third person that day. She knew what would happen to us. We were the next generation to meet him, and no amount of promised eternity could convince her to surrender. Instead, there was a knife. 
she felled my brother first, then me. A knife bound for our hearts. The song remained unsung, tainting the land and every living thing within. A promise unkept, potential unraveled. A parted cloud revealing the eye of a vengeful beast. Every bird in the meadow bursting open at the seams, their feathers falling like snow. I was there that day, watching my brother bleed out in the dried grass. The sun eclipsed in black. Our spilled blood burrowing into the ground, tainting it for generations. A dark pool puddling deep in the soil, cursing our cowardice. We could have been beautiful, all three of us. The sky had gone dark as the clouds hid the moon. Daniel screamed, only to suddenly stop. A part of me knew what was to come. There was a third person in that meadow, and they'd just killed Daniel. I couldn't see anything, but I had to run. I tripped on a rotting log and stepped into an anthill. The grass was so dry that I could hear the footsteps of someone approaching. Daniel was wheezing for air and then stopped. I'd heard it once before. As will be, growled a third voice. As will fucking be. Had it been another second, they would have gotten me. A memory of their fingertips grabbing my strawberry blonde hair flashed before my mind. The imagined pain of a knife between my shoulder blades shot through me. The blameless coward was making up for past mistakes, but it had cost me my life. A part of me was screaming with joy. A deep, evil part of me. The part that lay dying with the real Daniel. The other part of me was stepping out of an anthill and took off straight into the woods. It was a woman. She wasn't alone. Footsteps in the dark, joyous screams. People running, stumbling, falling and crying in the dark. A dozen of them, at least. Some came close enough for me to hear their breaths, but it was pitch black. I figured they'd hear me if I kept running, so instead I laid down. I hid next to a large rock. As the minutes passed, I heard them sweep the area, mistaking each other for me. Someone screamed in pain, another screamed in joy. Someone was silenced by a crunching sound as teeth sunk into flesh. Madmen in the dark, whooping and shouting, begging for my death, for their release. Asking me to give up and die. I covered my ears and prayed for dawn. My pulse raced so fast I could barely hear the individual beats anymore. I held my breath until I almost passed out. It felt like an eternity, but my panicked lizard mind refused to let me out of the moment. I couldn't even count the seconds. I just waited moment by moment for the nightmare to end. In an instant, or an eternity, came dawn. It worked. I don't know how, but it did. I had twisted my ankle without even noticing, but come the dawn, I could barely walk. There was still morning dew in the air, and a couple of blue sunflowers looked my way. I found no trace of Daniel's body, and when I called the police, there wasn't much they could do. They did ask me many questions about this supposed third person, and there was plenty of physical evidence for a group of people in the area, but nothing definite. People rarely fish down at Frog Lake anymore, and most people who live in that area are weird loners, this far into the woods, no one can hear you scream. We could be combing the forest for days without finding a speck of blood. The investigation is kept under wraps. No one has talked to me about it, and no one seems to be asking about Daniel anymore. And me? Well, people don't mistake me for that strawberry blonde girl anymore. I think she died in that field, next to her brother. Maybe now my life can truly be my own. I think I'll be okay.